Master. Hey there, and welcome back to Mastering Kingdom Master. So what did you think of the new intro? I think it's pretty awesome. It's 100% made in Kingdom Master, and I'm gonna show you in the next three lessons how to make it. I provided the project file down below for those people that just wanna take it and change the letters in it. I'm perfectly happy with that. I like to teach people how to do things on their own, but either way you go about it, the next three lessons, this one is going to be about project planning, arranging, how to do it, and the sound. The second is gonna be text techniques using KineMaster's text tool. And the third is gonna wrap the whole project up. So if you're just gonna download it and copy it, maybe come back on lesson two, cause I'll show you how to swap the text. Otherwise, everybody like, subscribe, join me on the other side. Remember to come back for the next couple of lessons and let's get learning how to make a cool intro like this and put it together yourself. I will see you over there. So this is the whole project, eight seconds long. It looks super tiny, right? Why I'm showing you this is to show you how much stuff is in that eight seconds. And I thought it was important here to do a little lesson on the finger mechanics of KineMaster. So I'm gonna show you this. Uh, one important button that I use in making these intros is this full layers menu over here. So we see all of the layers. This is important. When you're in this menu, there's this little preview window that doesn't allow you to change anything in there, but at least lets you see where you are when you're working with layers. All right. Always remember that you can stretch things out really far in order to get really precise movement and motion on them. Another thing that is important is that anytime that you touch an object and highlight and select it, then the playhead actually goes to either the front or the end of it, depending on how how it is close in relation to. So it's going to go to the front of master here. It's going to go to the tail end of mass there. Okay. Another thing is that if you want to move an object by itself, just by moving, you long press on the object and you can move it. So objects will snap and, uh, and this can be frustrating or helpful at times. You can always hit the back button to undo what you did, okay? So you long press on it and it will snap if you bring it close to the edge of the playhead. This is really convenient if you got your playhead on a bookmark. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna undo what I just did. I'm gonna move my playhead to a bookmark there. I'm gonna get the playhead to the bookmark there. And I'm gonna move master over to snap to that bookmark. And so the way that I do that is I press and hold on master and then I bring it and it snaps next to it. Very convenient over there. The last thing that I'm gonna show you in doing this is how to use this to very precisely change the duration, which is an important part of what we're gonna be doing. So you select any object, you press and you hold on the tail end of it, and then the duration is very, very easy to modify to a micro level if you have it zoomed in like this. When you're doing this and you, you press, you hold, and you change the duration, when you let go of it, your playhead will snap to the end of it, and you'll see that right now. And so I just wanted to show you those techniques. So now I want you to look at this in a new mind frame. You're not making a big long video. You're making something that's eight seconds long. Every item is important and synchronized like the bookmarks represent the places where the sounds are going to hit and you're going to program this. You're going to do it with project planning. You're going to think, how do I want my animations to look? How do I want my text to look? How do I want my sounds to fall? And let's go with it. Let's take that first step. The easiest part of your project plan is the background clip. Just pick a solid color that kind of matches your logo. You don't want an image in there because you're not going to animate it and it looks boring with like a tree sitting back in there. Make it six seconds long. If you have music like mine that had a specific length, then you could make it that long. But if not, let's just make it six seconds. I think that's a good amount of time for the intro. For the next step of the project, let's open the KineMaster sticker store. I don't recommend using outside sources like Google or YouTube and download because they're just a pain and there's so much here. So I like to look in the special effects area. We're looking for two things. Is One, we're looking for a background animation that kind of sits behind everything and is in the background. And then maybe some other additional animations that sit on top. Now. I've downloaded a few to my drive that I'm gonna show you my favorites, but remember, it's totally up to you. So choose the ones that you like, take a few, and then we'll work with them. All right, I'm gonna run through a few of my favorites and I'm gonna put captions with the names of them and if you see one that you like, grab it and use that one. So what we're doing now, I feel like is like the background color of a painting. Someone might say, why are you doing that first? Say, well, it sets the stage, the tone, the color, the feel, everything about it. So you really do it first. Now, you're looking for something that 
isn't going to conflict and take all of the attention away from your primary focus, which is your actual animation. So there's a lot in the KineMaster store that look really cool, but then you see them and they're just too busy, take up too much time, take up too much energy. And so these are ones that I found that kind of fit in that category. Now, there's a trick that you can do when you put this down is that you can actually reduce the opacity of it and it kind of takes some of the brightness away from some of the brighter ones. We can talk about that in a little bit, but why don't you grab one that you like, put it in your project and let's get going. Now you've got a background animation that you like, but I can guarantee that you're gonna to have to make a modification to it. It might be easy as just stretching it out to the full six seconds. Some of them have endless loops, but in this case, we can scale this one up so it fits in here. That's the Boca 2. All right, another thing that I did with a different copy of Boca 2 is because I wanted to keep the disks small, I just made two copies of it and moved them side to side from each other like that. This is the one that I actually used in my project is the Fireflight one. And and I actually felt like it didn't animate quite enough. So what I did was I added keyframes, one at the beginning and one at the end. So I animated the animation. And for instance, in the last one with this infinite brightness one, this one's so cool, but it's only two seconds long and it doesn't loop. So easy enough, you just duplicate it, put it on another layer, and I did the rotate and mirroring so it kind of constantly goes. And as I noted before earlier, you can drop the alpha opacity to have it a little bit further in the background. These are all little changes or big changes to make the animation fit your scenario perfectly. Take it the way that you want it, and it is your project, all right? So then let's move on to the next thing, talking about sound. I know it's not your first thought to have the sound come before the visuals, but I want you to watch and think about how precise that the elements land on beat with my intro. So when you think about it, the sound drives everything, and trying to create it backwards to match the sound and beat and rhythm on top of the letter placement doesn't make any sense at all. And also, having the sound first allows us to think about these letters in the small, small time frames that they are. This is a little more than half a second for the long ones, and these ones are actually a little bit more than a quarter of a second long. We're not used to laying things like that out, so we use the sound as our guideline. And so I hope I've convinced you of that, so now let's go ahead and put sound in our new project. Same as the animation, the KineMaster Store is a fantastic resource for sounds. I particularly like the musical effects category, and there's so much in here that I'm not going to go through it right now. You can check all of these things out. I had already gone ahead and taken the project that we're working on, and I added two sounds to it. I got a swoosh sound and a bit of a drumish music sound. So let's just play it on top of my star field. It's got a good beat to drop the elements in and a swoosh at the beginning to sync something else up to. So let me just show you one more little piece that I have just recently done in a video is bookmarking with your finger makes it so easy to find the right places to add your elements. Now, of course, in the beginning, this swoosh is just gonna be lined up with the first thing. I'm gonna add drum beats by tapping on this when they come. Okay, I did a horrible rhythmic job there. I'm not going to redo it, but as you can see from the bookmarking video before, when you tap on that as it's going, then it'll add bookmarks. If you messed up the way that I just did right now, you can remove them all and try it again. And I'm not going to do that. So that wraps up this part of the conversation. I hope that you stuck through it and the next episode is going to be out uh, sometime in the beginning of next week. So I will see you back here and we'll be continuing to make our own animation. All right, I hope that all made sense. Remember, come back the next couple of projects to see how we work forward with this. It's only gonna be about four days in between them. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or any of the above conversations to continue with me, add them below. I love communicating with you guys. Otherwise, get out there, make some really good stuff, and come back and see how we wrap this up over the next couple of weeks. <laughs>